Uh, our topic tonight is your path to a full-time income. So how to realistically make a full-time income selling on Amazon and how it can be realistic in your Amazon business. And so we're going to talk about that. So obviously when it's time for questions, we'll focus on answering questions focused on that topic, but we will stick around and answer as many other questions as possible. Um, we're going to have a good time tonight. So Rebecca, I love you. I'll see you in the chat and I appreciate you taking care of everyone in the chat. Yep. No problem. You can put your questions in the chat box or in the Q and a box, either one. Awesome. Well, she'll be there and she'll also be, um, making sure all the links that I talk about are there. So the first link tonight, if you have not already printed out the workbook, fulltimefba.com slash workbook. It's a six page, not very much ink at all. And this is where we are logging the fill in the blanks that I talked to you about, the notes that you are wanting to take, the things you are not wanting to forget, because I mean, I'm almost 50 and I don't remember half the thing that, the, the, okay, I do, I have a better memory than that, but there's always that one thing that I think I'll remember and I don't. Write it down. We have the resource for you so you can write it down. And uh, if you've got some some huge breakthroughs, uh, some, some just next steps that you want to make sure you don't forget, you have your to-do list. Now, don't do a grocery list right now. That's for later. But like, what's the next thing in your Amazon business or in your learning process that you need to do? And write that down. Um, so anyway, we are on day four, your path to a full-time income on Amazon. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with you and just talking through this with you tonight. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show the PowerPoint slides and presentation as I go along. And because uh, there's some really, really good visuals that I think will will help you understand kind of what I'm talking about. So Rebecca, do you see my PowerPoint? I'm about to make it full screen. Your path to a full-time income. Can you see that? Yes, it awesome. is there. Thank you for making sure. I'm not just showing a blank screen or showing my desktop, which is the picture, which is a picture, a cool picture of a Texas Rangers baseball player hitting a home game winning home run. Um, and so anyway, we're moving on. So your path to a full-time income on Amazon. If you see me looking over here, it's because this is where my other monitor is and where the PowerPoint presentation is. Um, but one of the biggest questions I get almost all the time, this is something people ask me on our Connect calls. This is things that people ask me in the Facebook group. This is things people email me in my inbox. How many items do I need to have an Amazon to make a full-time income? Rebecca and I, we are full-time FBA. We are making a full-time income. We're teaching people how to make a full-time income. And so the question is, all right, how many things do I need to sell? Because that's just an easy, it's like, if I gave you a blanket number, you'd be like, all right, I can just, I can do that. And, but then you might not make a full-time income. If I said, uh, you need a thousand items to make a full-time income. Well, guess what? You can lose money selling a thousand items on Amazon. That's not how it works. So how many items do I need to make that need to have in stock to make a full-time income on Amazon? We are going to um, talk through what the real question needs to be, because let me share my experience with you so far. There is a possible way that, and, and I've experienced this, I've been able to have fewer SKUs a SKU stands for stock keeping unit. It's like an ASIN or an FN SKU um, or, you know, whatever the items that are in your account. Um, and I've been able to have lower SKUs on Amazon in stock at one time, but I've been able to make more money. So I've got, I've had less inventory and more profit. So what's, what am I talking about? In 2014, I started my Amazon business in, um, in 2011. 2012 was my first full year and 2014 was when I finally broke six figures in sales in Amazon. And I had an average almost any day of the year, you would see I'd have an average of about 3000 items. This is because I was killing myself working way too many hours, finding way too many one-offs, garage sales, thrift stores, clearance aisles. These are the items that, um, you know, I, I, I was able to find, 3000 items but it it was a it was a ton of work and so i was able to make 
that, that full-time income, bring in six figures of sales. Obviously sales does not talk about, does not equate to what I actually make from those items, the actual profit from those items. But I was able to get six figures, over $100,000 in sales with 3,000 items. And I think it was possible for me to do that. And my number of SKUs were so high. My inventory levels were so high. Again, I was having to get a bunch of one-offs. Um, but it's because I was focusing on books and thrift stores, garage sales, clearance sales. And that is a good strategy at the beginning stages so that you, you, cause you're able to get those items a lot cheaper and make more money on them. But what would you rather do? Sell 3000 items and have to find 3000 different items to sell on Amazon to make a profit. Or would you rather sell less, but you get to go deeper and buy multiples of those items. And I'll, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me show you the year yearly progression after 2014. Um, by the way, average inventory, that's the number of SKUs I've had in my stock at Amazon warehouses. So I just want to be clear about that. But 2015, we increased our sales by 50%, but we cut the number of, of uh, unique SKUs, unique items that we were selling in half. Then in 2016, we increased our sales again, another 50%. But again, our sourcing was getting better. We were finding better inventory. We were able to start going deeper. So instead of having 3,000 items of just one item mostly, it was now 900 with some of them just one or two in stock and others, we were able to go deeper, find multiples. In 2017, our income increased, or, or excuse me, our sales, I wanna be clear, our sales, increased 40% and the number of SKUs at any time during that year was an average of about 750. In 2018, our sale, our uh, sales increased 20%. We lowered our average number of inventory items to 500. 2019, another 20%. The more you grow your business, the harder it's to, it gets to have that kind of exponential growth. But hey, it's growth. At that point, those numbers, I'm happy with 20%. So 20%, and again, we lowered the number of SKUs down to 350. In 2020, guess what? 2020 happened, and it was not good. Um, our sales got cut back about 10%, um, but we still continued to improve our sourcing methods uh, and, and buying less number of uh, unique items. In 2021, we recovered. We were able to increase our sales back a 10% and lower the number of average items to 300. In 2022, we were able to have a 15% increase, but and lowered our items of specific items at in stock in any particular time to 200. So look at look at that look at how that has happened. We've continued except for 2020. Curse you, 2020. We've been able to increase our sales every year we've been able to uh improve our sourcing and get better and and the biggest difference was finding the replens finding the replens that we can continually sell all year long we find and restock on a monthly basis to sell on amazon for a monthly uh, on a monthly basis so uh, this was the screenshot that i took last year where we had um 90 products in stock. So again, if you look at 200 was 2022, averaging 200. In 2023, we averaged probably around 100 individual items. We're, we, it, one of the things is we, we're, we, we stopped focusing on finding those one-offs. And yes, if I still find a one-off, I'll sell it. But my main focus and goal is to find the replens items that we can find again and again to sell again and again. In 2014, uh, this was this was a screenshot taken today. It's down to 50. But now it's down to 50 because also it's January, and Q4 wiped out a lot of our inventory, and so um, you know the average for 2024 probably is not going to be 50. I, I would say it'll probably still be around maybe the 100 range or so. Um, you know, we, I, I, you know, 
uh, th this was a screenshot just from today. So this isn't all of 2024. This is just the month of January. Um, but you can see we've been able to almost every year increase our sales and decrease the number of individual items that we were selling. So how is this possible? I'm glad you asked. And that's what we're going to talk about and how we've been able to make this full-time income by improving our sourcing methods by switching from clearance items and garage sale items to finding replens. And replens are, are the absolute game changer. But how is it possible? I was buying quality, faster selling inventory. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality of your inventory. Focusing on finding those replens. In fact, here is a screenshot. I have um, I have my Seller Central uh, manage inventory. I have sorted it everything in uh, date created. So date created means when you first listed this item. So this is a screenshot of the replens and the replens that we've been able to continually sell on a consistent basis. This is an item that I sourced and found in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Sixth year, six, where did that come? Seven years selling this for at least seven years. I mean, that is a replen that continues to, to pay us. And then you see the second line is 8-30-2017. The next one, August 30th, also of 2017. We've got July 11th of 2019. These are items that are in stock because I've got active. There are some items that are out of stock, we just need to restock them. Um, Cause you know, I don't have all of them. I just have my active showing, but obviously you can see these are items that I've gone deep on. This first one, there's four in stock. There's five inbound. There's one reserved. It's probably sold earlier. There's 13 in stock of the second line. This third line, two in stock. I need to replenish that. I don't have any inbound. There's only two that must've been selling pretty quickly. This other one, I'm currently out of stock. There's 37 that are reserved. So hope e either that means that they're they've been they've all sold very, very recently and I need to restock, or maybe they are in between that inbound stage where maybe it's getting checked in, so it's not um, available and it's not inbound, but it's being checked in, and so it's reserved. So this is something that is possible for your Amazon business. And this is what's going to help you make that full-time income. You know, use the garage sale clearance aisle sourcing, book sourcing like that to kind of ramp up. But once you start getting some funds, some larger amounts of funds, investing in replens when you find them, that's going to be what's going to help break you through to those six-figure sales. And sometimes six-figure months. We've had six-figure months before that you know just passing you know first we had our first six for your year i think it was two years ago two or three years ago when we had our first six figure month of course it was in q4 that it helped a lot um but it is possible for you as well and so when you're looking at this information um here's your first fill in the blank if you haven't figured it out yet first fill in the blank it is not about how much inventory you have. It's about the quality of your inventory. And I'm not just meaning quality of craftsmanship and quality of brand stability and recognition. I mean the quality of how well your item is going to sell over the long term. We have certain inventory items. We've probably sold a thousand of a particular item because we just continually Restock it, restock it via retail arbitrage, restock it via online arbitrage, restock it via wholesale. We've been able to do that on a consistent basis. People buy it and we make money. And then we restock it when we start to, usually when we start to sell out. Sometimes things sell so so fast that it's like, oh man, I sh you know I need to get on this and reorder. But it's not about how much inventory, going back to the opening question, how much inventory do I need to make a full-time income? not about that. It's about the quality of your inventory.
So I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. And then we've got a special guest that I want to interview and I can't wait to show you. Um, you can snowball your profits. Now, what I'm about to show you, I want to be clear. I don't want to try to um, mislead you in any way. This is just an example about this concept of snowballing your profits. So again, this is not an example of what to aim for, but it is an example of what how you can snowball your profits. So say in January, you spend $200 on inventory and you make $300 back after fees. All right, now you got $300. So you buy $300 of inventory in February and you make back 500 after all the fees are taken out. In March, $500 you put back into inventory and you make 900 back. Again, not you do not expect that, especially at the beginning stages of your Amazon business. You don't expect this. I'm just teaching you the concept of snowballing your profits. April, 900 bucks into inventory, you make back $1,600 after fees. So you put that 1,600 back into in inventory, 3,000 back in your, your pocket after fees. In June, you put $3,000 into inventory. You make $5,000 back. Look at it, things are snowballing. And I love that I got to use the graphic. In fact, let's watch it again. That's awesome. Snowballing on the screen. Um, it's awesome. Unless you're in the middle of snow right now and you're like, I'm already tired of snow. I don't want to see it again. I'm sorry. Um, in June, 500 into inventory, you make $8,000 back. August, 8,000 into inventory, make 12,000 back. It is the most profitable reselling strategy that will help you make that full-time income. The fast turn snowball, that's your next fill in the blank. Most profitable reselling strategy, the fast turn snowball. Back to this snowballing your profits. Again, not an expectation. This is this is like, like, like maybe many years into your Amazon business, you can snowball your profits that fast. But I'm trying to show you about what is the concept of snowballing your profits. And so that is, it, this is something that is possible to experience whatever you're able to invest in inventory, you can reinvest that. So some people are like, okay, are you telling me to reinvest everything? I mean, like when do I actually start making a paycheck, taking a paycheck, being able to uh, pay myself? That is a personal decision for you. Obviously, the more you can reinvest, then the faster your snowball will grow. But I understand we are not all in the position to spend a lot of time and energy in something and not have to be paid for that time and energy. Um, you know, most people, when they want to make a full-time income on Amazon, they work it as like a side hustle. They work it as like a, something on the side so that when it gets to that full-time income making range, then I can transition out of my full-time job, part-time job, whatever you're doing and be able to move into making that full-time income on your own at home. So should you reinvest everything? It's going to depend on your own situation. If you can, I recommend doing that. Um, but I also know sometimes you just, you need to say, I'm going to need to set part of this aside so that I can pay for food. You know, that is very, very important, obviously. So, um, but that concept the more you can reinvest, the more you can make. But even if you put $200 into inventory and make $300 back, and you're like, all right, I'm just going to put that same $200 into inventory the next month. And so you're able to turn that $200 into $300. And so you're still able to, to like put some aside, whether it's for bills or for a goal or for debt or whatever, but still maybe reinvest that same $200 again and again. You're still able to make some really good money and what's really even cool is that $200 might turn into $300 in January. That same $200 might turn into $350 in February. Because guess what? The more experience, the more you learn, the more mistakes you avoid, the more you're going to make. The better choices you're going to make with sourcing. The more replens that you find, that's, again, a consistent source. And so that same $200 reinvested into inventory again and again could turn into a you know start off 200 to 300 and then you turn next month you turn that 200 into 350 
And then a few months after that, you're turning the $200 into 400 and then five. And then, and then you get to the point where you're like, oh, I can actually start reinvesting more now. So let's, let's start and upgrade to $300 of sourcing expenses. And so that's how you can actually get to a place where you're making a full-time income. Reinvest everything. You don't have to, but the more you can, then it's possible. So how many items do I need to have on Amazon to make a full-time income? Uh, you can do it with 3,000. You can also do it with 50. It doesn't matter about the quantity. It's all about the quantity. And um, and this is something that is, um, you know, it's hard for people to imagine being possible, but we've been able to teach this. We've been able to teach our coaching clients this. We've been able to teach others this who've experienced full-time income. Joanne was on the call yesterday and she shared that she makes a full-time income. She's able to travel now. And it was mostly thanks to the full-time FBA platform. And whether it's the podcast, the Facebook group, uh, the coaching, whatever is going to be best for your specific situation, um, it's possible. It is possible. And we want to help you get there. Um, and uh, I really would love to um, stop sharing the screen because it's just staring at me right now. Um, I really want to, if, uh, if, if, if Christy is on, bring Christy on. So uh, Christy, I'm going to promote you to panelist, which will kick you off the call, but then bring you right back so that you can actually come on camera. So I'm going to do that right now. And then we get to talk about that. I've got some other fun stuff to talk about after our talk with Christy. Um, more nuggets to put in your notes down here um, and some more things to talk about. But we're, I'm going to talk with Christy. I'm going to promote her to panelists right now. And uh, and when she comes on, we will hear from her because she's got an amazing, inspiring story that is just, um, it's, it, it is incredible. It is, it is so, so incredible. Um, so let's see. Did I push the red button? Let me see. I'm also bringing her on a little earlier. Oh, um, let's see. Oh, there we go. All right. Guess what? I tried to promote the wrong person. That's because all these uh, these letters are smaller. I keep finding that the older I get, the smaller letters are going to be. Um, so she's coming. Chrissy's coming on now. Awesome. So she'll she'll come off mute and um, and if she uh, is able to also come on camera, well, I also understand sometimes camera's not always an option. But uh, but Christy, I really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight for a little bit to talk about your experience of making a full time income selling on Amazon. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited about um, right. this this webinar and this workshop and. The the possibility of helping others make a full time income always just gets love me it. going. Love it, love it. Well, yeah. I am super excited to be here. And uh, where would you like me to start? Let's let's start at the beginning. Like, how did you first discover selling on Amazon, and then how did you first discover uh, the whole full time FBA program? So I started selling on Amazon. My husband actually came to me and said, well, since you're selling on eBay, why don't you try Amazon? And anybody who has sold on eBay knows that it is difficult. You're constantly pumping stuff out. You're constantly sourcing. You're holding inventory, which is a huge pain. I had two rooms of my old house designated to eBay inventory. And it was just considering how I do things now, going, looking back at it, it was just painful, just painful to think what I went through. But my husband said, well, let's, let's try Amazon. And I said, no way, no how, not doing it. And then he came home with a couple of dollar tool that he got from Lowe's and he got it for like, I don't know, it was just dollars. And so I immediately, well, we had gotten on and I had um, gone ahead and opened up an Amazon account. And so when he brought that home, I went ahead and listed it. And I think I listed it for $30 and it sold within 10 minutes. Now, when you're an eBay seller, you're lucky if it sells in a week, uh, let alone a month, and you hope not to have it in a year. 
And so for it to happen in 10 minutes, I said, okay, what is that? Where'd you get it? Let's go get all of them. And so that's what we did. And so we had no clue as to what we were doing, like literally no clue. And so one night, my husband and I just, we got online and we um, found resources and we stumbled upon full-time FBA. And there we saw videos of how, how to do Amazon, how to do Amazon. And so we, I think we binge watched, I don't know, 30 or 40 videos that night. It was crazy. We were up until two o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how we were going to do this. <laughs> and then what we did, um, once we got a good handle on it, um, it was just a few days. We went and collected every single tool from every single Lowe's, I don't know, in five states. And so that was the beginning of our Amazon journey. That it's kind of crazy. Awesome. Uh, it's 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 fun and the cool thing is is stuff like that still happens it's not like every day but it's you know there's there are times where you find something you know it's like i, I i'll plan to go to walmart and target and kohl's and walgreens today but then i find something at walgreens and i'm like no i'm gonna go to all the walgreens now and this is just too good yep exactly yep exactly yeah. so um so you're making a full-time income you with amazon and stuff um what do you think the the full time FBA, um, like the the help and the trainings and stuff, like how do you think that helped fast forward your being able to achieve that full time FBA status? So, honestly, Stephen, I think you guys probably saved me five years. You know, I I'm making it sound like it was just a couple of days and we were up and running. No, it was hours and hours and hours of you know, of work hours and hours of trying to figure out, okay, so we had this whole product line, but should we buy the whole product line? And how do we read a keep a chart? Because we did not know. And so we're going into all these low stores, finding these particular items that I know I just sold. And then we found a whole bunch more from the same product line. And so I had to learn quick, you know, what ones to buy and what ones not to buy. But truly, you guys taught me how to read Keepa. Um, you guys taught me how to do, a, an, I mean, just to process sh a shipment into FBA. That's how, I mean, I learned it watching your videos. And so seriously, I think I probably got five years ahead of the curve. And I mean, we have all made mistakes in our business. Don't get me wrong. I've bought the wrong inventory. I've, you know, I've, we've all been there, right? right. But um, truly, truly, I think that, full-time FBA definitely helped so much. That's, that's awesome. And I love, I love hearing that. And, um, I, I was just thinking about, uh, I know we've talked before about kind of what selling on Amazon and having a full-time income has, has done for you. So tell a little bit about how, uh, selling on Amazon, making that income has helped you get to the place where you're able to, uh, move to where you are. I won't get, spoil anything, but I'll let you kind of share <laughs> What, where it is sure. that you are now and what you're doing. So um, I went through an ugly divorce in uh, 2010 and um, you know, the 2008 economy wasn't doing anybody any favors, but mm -hmm. I didn't actually lose my house until I think about 2010, give or take. And I'm going off recollection. I, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to block that part out because right. it was terrible right. and painful. You know, it's really hard to go through that process. And so um I'm, I moved, I changed locations and just, you know, struggled and struggled to get back on my feet. Um, had three kids was single mom for a little while. Um, and then, you know, a little while later, a year or so I met my husband and we moved in together and, you know, I was doing eBay to afford to put my children into private school. And, um, and so the long story short is, you know, we struggled and I, and when I say struggled, I mean, we needed every penny to be able to pay the mortgage, to be able to put food on the table. There was nothing left over. And, um, and since we went, uh, full time with Amazon, which, you know, I, I immediately stopped eBay immediately stopped and put every single energy focused into Amazon. But since we did that, we were able to, um, pay down our house, which it was a question as to whether or not we were going to be able to keep that one because, you know, the economy still wasn't doing great in 2012, 2014. I didn't get on um, to Amazon until uh, 2017. And so um, 
it, we just struggled. And, and, you know, every newlywed couple with kids struggles and that's just how it is, you know. Um, but we were making it and, you know, we really didn't have any complaints. So fast forward to starting Amazon within the first quarter, my sales were $79,000, my first quarter. Wow. And um, that, that made all the difference. That literally made all the difference. Now, not all, don't get me wrong. That was sales. That was not profit, you right. know, but still the profit from that was amazing to us at the time. You know, we started paying additional on our mortgage. We started putting money aside. We started, um, you know, doing things that would help us to make money. Ultimately, we ended up buying an, another house that we turned into a rental that, and we got it, you know, for a very, a very good price. The economy was seriously depressed still. So um, what we did was we took the houses. Um, we were in California at the time and we, we saw the appreciation in the houses and that was all Amazon money. You know, we were putting Amazon money there and we saw the appreciation in the houses. We sold them. And we were able to pay outright for our farm. Some people want to travel. Some people want to shop with their money. I want to buy cows. And so <laughs> I, love that. I love that so much. So we have a farm in East Texas, currently under about six inches of water. But I am today, I don't say that I had to farm today. No, I got to farm today. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And my children love it. The quality of life for them is so much different than being in a city. I'm able to stay home with them. I homeschool and I work my business probably three, three and a half days, except outside of Q4. Q4, mm -hmm. I run like a crazy person, like everybody else does. Oh yeah. Maximize that profit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so that's my story. We are happily settled in East Texas on a farm. We are starting a dairy. I still work my Amazon store. We still have really great income. We had an excellent Q, uh, Q4 just passed and uh, we have no inventory hardly in now. So we're getting ready to get more inventory in for Easter and everything coming up. So Easter and Mother's Day are big for us. So we're super excited about that. That's And, awesome. and? I, I have you guys to thank. I have hmm. you guys to thank. Well, we, we, we love hearing your story and we love seeing how you put in the work because, you know, we've got the content, we've got the videos, we've got the direction, but you put in the work, you put in the dedication and you are seeing the results of that and are on a continued basis. So when like even the economy is all being weird and stuff and there's a lot of unpredictability. You've been able to have some security with your Amazon business. And that's, I love, I love hearing that. Um, so obviously we, we're talking about uh, our coaching program and telling people about, you know, Hey, this is possible for you. We'd love to help push you in the right direction, give you the information that you need, the encouragement, the handholding, the, the accountability. Um, if someone on here is, you know, I'm kicking the tires about this, or I'm not, I'm thinking maybe, maybe I should get coaching. I've, I've, I want to start off right. Or I started and things aren't going like I expected. And they're thinking about coaching. What would you tell them? I have a group. I have an accountability group. It's for women. We're all business owners. We're all on Amazon. Um, some, some of us sell some of the same products, you know, and we help each other. And if I'm not sure about a product, I'll send it over to one of my friends and she'll say, you know, you might want to think differently about this or get them all, you know? And so it's great. I have four, three people. There's four of us. I have three people that I can bounce ideas off of. And I love it. I would seriously be lost without my accountability group, seriously be lost. And so I say, do it and do it quickly because you need people. You are not going to have all the answers. That's the bottom line. I do not have all the answers and I know this and I'm never going to have all the answers. And plus things change so much on Amazon so oh, yeah. quickly that you may have the answers today and you don't have the answers tomorrow. So you need, you need a group. You need to be connected to people who know what they're doing. Yeah. And I, you know, Rebecca and I love helping people. We love trying to read the trends and figure out what's going on, but there's sometimes where things happen and we're like, Oh, okay. We just, we need to react to, and, and figure out how to best respond. I, yes. I respond instead of react, but respond well. Um, and with the group coaching program, 
having those other people to bounce ideas off of, um, I, you know, I love our group coaching program calls because, you know, we're, we've got the calls every other week and someone says, oh, here's a question. And I give it, a, it some advice about that. And someone was like, well, this is what I experienced in this situation. Also think about this. And so it's like a collaborative effort. So you're not ever alone um, yes. with your Amazon business. You have a group of people who are doing it with you and helping each other. And of course, when we're all trying to help each other succeed, we all win. And so absolutely. Um, and that is so important. And I'll tell you something. I did really well in the beginning of my business. The second year wasn't as great. But by the third year, I had found my my team, my group, and every single one of our businesses of the people in, in my group, their businesses all have grown. Oh, yeah, I, I believe that because, um, I you know, I just I, I know the power of you know, community and it's huge. And it's, it's something that can uh, really transform someone else's Amazon business because I, I, I know a lot of people got into selling on Amazon because they're like, I can do this by myself and I can work from home and I don't have to talk to anybody because I know certain people are built that way, but we can only go so far on our own, but to have right. the kind of support that Rebecca and I give that with the community gives, um, can help make you and, and help you go even further and farther than you can ever dream of on your own. And so that's why we're inviting people to join our coaching program. They can go to fulltimefba.com slash coaching um, and sign up. And it is, it is something that is going to only help you in your Amazon business. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you again for hanging out with me uh, tonight and, and talking with me about this and coming on camera um so yeah. happy to i'm yeah. sorry i just came in from milk and cows and all that good type stuff so <laughs> oh, i love that i love that that's so so good you know we're in north texas you're in east texas we're gonna have to find time for us to to get together um in person that would be so we fun. would love that that would be fun awesome be cool. well it's good to see you and thanks again for your help you're welcome we love you and uh, thank you again for sharing your story we love you guys too have a good night all right bye-bye All right. So again, thank you, Christy, for just hanging out with us tonight. If you are inspired by by Christy's story, you know, let me know in the comments. Let me know, and um, it it just it's just been fun, kind of hearing her and her story and being like, she wasn't saying this was all candy and roses, rainbows and unicorns. No, there's a lot of hard work that that goes into it. But the the biggest thing that that she said that that I was really thankful for and can relate to and what we try to do for you in our coaching program. And she's like, I think your help saved us five years. I mean, imagine if you, when you got your Amazon business started, were able to save five years of mistakes and, and, and learning the things faster than, you know, going through the process of learning on your own. And, uh, you know, there's just so much upside to our coaching program and, and the possibilities um, are pretty awesome. I do want to to share with you something um, about our coaching program. Um, I, I kind of put together a list of five things. They all start with the letter C. Um, so these are the five C's of the full-time FBA coaching program. Um, I, for 10 years before I sold on Amazon, I was a youth pastor. So it's like I would always make my talks to the teenagers be like, they all start with the same letter or something. And I just, I can't get away from that. Um, so the five C's of the full-time FBA coaching program, Rebecca's going to make sure these five C's are in the, uh, in the comments for you. But the first thing is content. You're going to get an insane amount of content in the full-time FBA coaching program. That's over 25 hours of pre-recorded information that is, you know, specific to starting your Amazon business. And then once you get started, the things you need to learn to grow your Amazon business. Um, it, it's something that's going to help you move your Amazon business forward in ways that is going to be so much better than on your own. So content, so much content, pre-recorded stuff that you can listen to in your own time. Um, and then um, as a part of that content, you have the full-time FBA um, uh, line of courses. So you get the Jumpstart Amazon course which is our starter course, the beginner course, everything you need to know 
to start your Amazon business, create your first shipment, understand sourcing for inventory, understand how to get feedback, understand uh, the basics of retail arbitrage, on an arbitrage, wholesale, sourcing. Uh, you know, you get all the basics, the foundational stuff. And I know some of you are struggling because your foundation is cracked. You didn't start off the right way. There's multiple ways to start. There are some that are good. There are some that are um, a little bit less um, stable. And so you might need to benefit from that. So there's the Jumpstart Amazon course. There's also the Reseller's Guide to Online Arbitrage, where we break down all the strategies of finding inventory online that you can have either shipped to yourself and then to Amazon or shipped to someone else who will get it ready to send to Amazon for you. So many different options. So the Reseller's Guide to Online Arbitrage and finding inventory online from the comfort of your home. Also, the Reseller's Guide to Replenishables. Uh, day two of this workshop, we talked about replens and how they are transformative of your Amazon business. So everything we know about replens, from finding replens to knowing what to look for, um, you know, uh, what, uh, also how to find zombie replens. Um, zombie replens is a term I came up with, but basically replens, a good replen will last you know, a year or two before it kind of fizzles out and is no longer profitable. The longest replan that I've ever had, I've been able to sell that item for over eight years and continue to. So, um, th you know, those are the awesome ones that really help you. But replans usually last like a year or two. Either the store that you're buying it from stops sourcing it, or maybe a lot of competition comes in and lowers and lowers the price. So the Reseller's Guide to Replans will show you how to find zombie replans, which are replans that used to be profitable. Guess what? They're profitable again, and you can set up notifications to be notified when they're profitable again. I'll teach you that in the coaching program with the Reseller's Guide to Replenishables. Then there's everything we know about Keepa with the Reseller's Guide to Keepa. Using the sales history, pricing history uh, with the Keepa subscription, and be able to make smarter sourcing decisions, pricing decisions, um, knowing how deep to go on a product. The five courses that I'm talking about right now are included in our coaching program. Fulltimefba.com slash coaching. You get the reseller's guide to keep up. And then also the reseller's guide to pricing for profits. I mean, we're wanting to make money, right? Let's squeeze out every last penny of profits as possible. So the reseller's guide to pricing for profits. The Jumpstart Amazon course, our course on online arbitrage, keep up, replans, and pricing. 25 hours of pre-recorded video training for you to get that's just the c and the five c's content you get that content to help you in your amazon business so you're loaded with content but you know what sometimes you need more than just content sometimes you need more than just information um and we want to help you with that um because content that either you read online or you experience in a video does it really talk about or uh, factor in your custom uh, experience, your own special experience? And so that's the second C. The first C is content. The second C of the full-time FBA coaching program is customized experience. Like I don't tell all of our coaching clients the exact same thing. There are ones who have more money to invest and others who have less money. There are ones who have more time to invest and others that have less time. So there's different type of coaching that I give you based on your experience and and your situation. Uh, some people live in a, a big town surrounded by tons of retail stores. Other people live out in 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 the middle of the in the middle of nowhere as, as some would say with not very many local retail stores but have access to online stores with their computer. You get a customized experience with the full-time FBA coaching program. Um, the third C is called continuous strategy. We don't stand still with the full-time FBA coaching program. We are always talking about strategy. We are always talking about how to do things because some there's certain things to do in January that are not as important to focus on in July. There are certain things in March that you don't need to do that you need to instead do in a different month. And so it's like we make sure that, in fact, you might have heard Jason on his um, testimonial on yesterday's call talking about how in our coaching calls, you're like, hey, we fourth quarter is coming up. Let's make sure we maximize fourth quarter. That he's, He said that's one of the things he likes the most is the timely trainings and teachings that we do. So continuous strategy. Uh, the fourth C, CEO talks. 
we miss out on a lot of opportunities for growth because we're not thinking like a CEO. Um, if you are running an Amazon business, guess what? You are a CEO. Let me ask you this question. Should a CEO be taking price stickers off of items that you just retail arbitrage sourced from a store? Should a re should a, Do you think a CEO would be doing that? Would a CEO be doing taking out the trash? No, that, so we need to outsource a lot of things in our Amazon business. And there's certain things we need to focus on and certain things we need to let go. So we have continuous conversations. I, there's just too many C's. I can say they're the 10 C's. I don't know, but the five C's. CEO talks, we continually talk about that um, in the Fulton FBA coaching program. So we got the content. We've got the customer, excuse me, customized experience. Um, we have the continuous strategy. We've got the CEO talks. And finally, the community, our group coaching call. You heard Christy talk about my Amazon business really began to grow exponentially when I found a group of people to go along, go through with this. And so she was able to get help from others and while she was getting help from me and be able to grow our Amazon business. So community. Uh, and so there's just a lot of opportunity out there and we want you to be a part of it. Um, if you have questions, if you're like, Steven, coaching sounds awesome. I want to go to fultonfba.com slash coaching. I saw the pricing. I saw what you offer. And I, I still I still have a few more questions. If you need to book a 15-minute call with me, go to fultonfba.com slash connect. Um, the coaching program is 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 going to, to close down uh, our enrollment um, on Monday night, midnight Pacific. And so if you want to get on a call with me sometime between now and then, we can talk. I can answer your questions. Guess what? If you happen to, I you couldn't get a call until Tuesday, and you still have questions, you know, obviously we'll still uh, let you into the program and stuff. But because we know it's busy time here and there, so um, so if you want to call with me, fulltimefba.com/connect, and we can get on a fifteen minute phone call. Find out what is best for you, how I can best serve you, what questions you have about the coaching call, and um, the, the coaching program and uh, and move you in the right direction. Here's the truth. If we have a call and I don't think that you're a good fit for the Fulton FBA coaching program, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you. It's not going to be a sales call. I'm not going to be pushy. I'm not going to be like, you know, sign up and what's your question? Okay, the answer is yes. Sign up for the coaching program. That's It's not going to be a pushy sales call. It's going to be a call where I want to serve you and help you. So um, fulltimefba.com slash connect is if you want to sign up for a 15 minute call with me. Um, I do want to let you know, if you're watching this live, there are coupon codes that you can use to save, but those coupon codes expire midnight tonight. I announced these coupon codes yesterday. I'll tell you again what they are. They expire midnight tonight Pacific. Uh, the coupon codes will save you $300 off of coaching. If you're paying the monthly payment plan, it'll save you $25 a month. 25 times 12, $300. If you do the pay in full option, uh, they'll save you $300 at once. So the coupon code for the monthly payment plan is save 25. Squish them together, make it all one word. Save 25 is the coupon code if you're doing the payment plan. Uh, if you are doing the pay in full enrollment, the coupon code is SAVE300, all one word, squish them together. SAVE300 is the coupon code for the pay in full option. And they, the coupon codes will not work after midnight Pacific tonight. So you want to make sure that you take advantage of that. That is our fast action bonus. We like to reward fast action takers. And so that's our reward for you, $300 of savings for this. So check that out. Go to fulltimefba.com slash coaching and see if it is something that would be interesting to you. Um, I want to show you one thing real quick, and then we'll get into the Q&A. So I'm going to share my screen one last time. Um, so this is a this is an email that I got from uh, Jason Inazo. He was on the call yesterday. Um, this is just, I just love getting emails like this, um, email, the email, can, Rebecca, can you see the email screenshot? Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, 
I got this email subject. I made my first sale September 7th, 2023 from Jason. Um, his email said, greeting Stephen, Jason Azano here. I just wanted to share with you that I had my first sale on Amazon literally the day after my first products went live. It feels amazing to have a sale so quickly. Now I just need to get more product source and available. Two months ago, selling on Amazon was just an idea. And now I've made a small profit already. Thanks for your coaching help thus far. And I look forward to learning how I can continue to scale my business. I got, I literally got goosebumps seeing this email because I just, I love celebrating wins. In fact, every coaching call, we start off, let's celebrate our wins. Um, but hearing that from Jason, and then if you remember from last night's call, Jason has grown his Amazon business. He's already hired a VA who's helping him doing online arbitrage. And, and like he is thriving and you can too. You, you can thrive as well. And so I invite you to join our full-time FBA coaching program. It is a 12 month long program where we get together with group coaching calls every other week. We go through the process together. We problem solve together. We grow together. We celebrate together. It is great. You know, it's it's like, um, I almost want to like get everyone who shows up for the coaching calls together in person and in, and like hang out for the weekend. We have a good time. We're friends. It's it's pretty awesome. And we want you to join us in that. So fultonfba.com slash coaching. Uh, so let's go and transition into the Q&A for tonight. Get rehydrated there. Yes, yes. Get hydrate or hydrate. <laughs> Soothe your throat there. Mm. Okay. So we've got some questions here. And just as a reminder, you can ask your questions for Stephen or for me about coaching, about selling on Amazon, um, starting your business, getting your business to full time, any of those things related to what we've been talking about in the chat box or in the Q&A, and I'm trying to curate all of that and manage it so that we kind of keep things going along. So starting out, um, do you guys use a prep center? Yes, um, and in the, well, is this the 14th year of selling on Amazon? Um, we have used a prep center most of the time. We've used three or four different prep centers at different times. Um, but yes, we highly recommend using a prep center. In fact, like our the very first prep center that we worked with, uh, the owner decided he wanted to do something else and shut down the prep center. And we had to go through like two or three months of like prepping all the stuff ourselves again. And that was like, no like fun. punishment. I was like, oh, it, it, it feels so good to get that prepping work outsourced to someone who charges you a fair price. Um, if you want a recommendation, we love My Prep Center. You go to fulltimefba.com slash My Prep Center and check them out and see what what if it's a good fit for you. Um, if you want some help on picking the right prep center, uh, you can just go to our blog, fulltimefba.com, type in Prep Center in the search bar, and it'll give you a couple blog posts about what to look for and uh, and why it's important to use a prep center. But yes, we use a prep center and we love it. Yeah, highly recommend it for, if you've got one locally and you do RA, that, that was what we had at the beginning. We were very spoiled with one here locally and we were able to just in half an hour have our stuff over there at the prep center for them to take care of for retail arbitrage, but um if you're doing OA or wholesale sourcing, it is a must to do that, to have a place to send your shipments and have somebody to process it for you. It makes things so much easier. Definitely. Yeah. I just see in the chat, Christy, when I was talking about all the different courses that were involved, Christy said, uh, who just came on, I love your reseller's guides. So much information and Jumpstart Amazon was my go-to guide. Anyway, Love just, it. Yeah. Um, the name of the prep center is my prep center. I know that's kind of funny, but yeah. So fulltimefba.com slash my prep center. 
Um, it's not like we're being possessive. That is their actual name is my prep center. So um, what sort of pricing should I expect for prep centers? Is it by the number of items, that kind of thing? Like you have to build that into your ROI. So that's something that, that's a really good thing to be thinking about. Yeah, some prep centers, you know, there's a flat rate for items that don't require any additional prep. But like, you know, if you have something breakable, then there's additional charges for that. Um, or there's some prep centers that will create bundles. Like my prep center will create bundles. You can have one, you know, one order from this wholesaler and this other wholesaler and have them both ship it to my prep center. And then my prep center for a fair price will put the bundle together for you for your end customer. So, um, but yeah, you can go to my fulltimefba.com slash my prep center, set up a call with them to find out what plan works best for you. I feel like their prices are very reasonable. So check that out. Sorry, I was responding about the Durham Bulls um, t-shirt in the chat. Oh, yes, yes. Um. <laughs> yes, the minor league baseball team of the, uh, oh, who is it? I forgot now. Um. Oh, totally. Was it the Diamondbacks? No. The Diamondbacks were the team that was connected to the Amarillo Sod Poodles, which is- Amanda a, says it's the yeah. Rays. Oh, yeah, the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah. Okay. Yes. How did we forget that? Yeah, the Diamondback, we, we saw the- um, in, when we were in Amarillo last year, yes, we saw the Diamond sod dog. poodles, which yes. only, I didn't know what a sod poodle was. It's basically a prairie, um, prairie dog. Prairie dog. I'm like, why aren't yeah. you the prairie dogs? I guess because sod poodles are more fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What app do you use for sourcing? We've um, we recommend the Scoutify app that comes bundled with Inventory Lab. I think, was it day one that we kind of talked a little bit more about Inventory Lab, Stephen? I think so. Scottify yeah. is awesome. And um, especially because right on the very front, there's a quote from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, it says, in my experience, there's no such thing as luck, uh, which is true. You, I mean, I feel like the most, the luckiest people in the world are working the hardest. It just happens to, you know that luck happens because guess what? They're working hard and they're consistent. A little side note for you. Yeah. Um, do you recommend using business credit to scale? Um, obviously, this is a decision for um, everyone to make for themselves, but we do not recommend using debt um, to grow your business at all. I feel like using debt, using credit cards, using somebody else's money causes you to make more mistakes because you're going to be pretty dang sure you're not making a mistake when you're investing your own money. But if you're using someone else's money, you might get a little lazy or do, try a shortcut or like, I want, I think I'll buy that item and just really, really hope that it sells. I think it'll sell, but I'm not so sure. I'm just going to buy it anyway. It looks awesome. Uh, you're you were gonna and plus also on days where you're not finding inventory you might make decisions to buy stuff that's not really profitable just to have said bought things just to have experienced buying things so you don't feel like you're didn't have a, a good day and so yeah if you're using someone else's money you might make worse decisions you might not but i feel like on average we just don't do things as well and as um uh, focused if we're using someone else's money you know if you want to use credit card points if you're paying off your credit card you know then you know we're fine with that um that's what we do right. we do use a credit card on a regular basis but we pay it off i pay it off every tuesday i don't know yeah. why i just have tuesday is my day that i go in and just move money around <laughs> but yeah we make sure that we always have the cash on hand to source with or to pay whatever expenses with and then yeah i like getting the points but yeah. Yeah. Bill's like, if you come to town, love to hang out with you guys. I'm in Raleigh, but oh, we were just there. I know. Yeah. We went, um, we usually go every couple of years, two or three years. And we were there last, my niece graduated. So we had to go this year or I guess it was last year now, but mm -hmm. I love it there. Hopefully we'll get to go back sometime yeah. soon. And back to Durham for another Bulls game. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to do that soon. Um, Kelly's asking, can you speak to the variety of skill levels in the coaching group? Are they all beginners or will it be a mix of skill levels 
skill levels from beginner to intermediate to experienced? If the skill levels vary, how do you help people within those mixed skill levels? That's an excellent question. Yeah, it is really a good question. I would say it tends to lean more towards uh, the beginners of of selling on Amazon for the majority, but there are some people who are further along with their business um, and are, have experienced more success and have experienced different levels of of struggles than the beginner. But one of the things I love is hearing the beginners who are part of the group being like, I love hearing your story about what you're experiencing. You're probably like a year and a half or two years ahead of me. And I love to know about what's coming. And I love that these calls are recorded so that I can go back and like re-listen to the coaching calls and be reminded of what you're experiencing now and how I'm, I'm helping him or her when they're not there yet, but they know that they're going to probably be. So it's it's a good it's a good it's a it's a good mix. It does lean more towards beginners, but in the the ones who are a little bit further down the the way um, are involved there too. And it, it's it's funny. Um, the in my in my experience so far, the beginners almost show up every single coaching call, and the ones who are a little bit more advanced kind of show up every once in a while. Um, and I feel like that they're, they're they're just got their nose. To, what's the phrase nose to the grindstone grindstone i think yeah um and and so it's like they, they may show up once a month while beginners show up every uh, every two weeks the ones who are a little bit more advanced because they're like they've mostly started to get some things down and and get some experience um and some confidence and so they'll show up or they'll send me a message and you know we'll we'll talk via email um so just, yeah, just wanted to to let you know that, but it's really cool seeing a, a, both of them interact with each other. Yeah, and we've had the question come up before about the size of the group, and we do cap the size of the group. We're not going to let it get so big that you get lost in the group. We want to keep it so that you get the group atmosphere, but it's not massive so that you don't get that customized, individualized attention. You don't get the opportunity to ask your questions during the coaching call, that kind of a thing. So we will cap the size of the group, not by saying, you know, no more students, but saying, okay, now we need to have two groups, one that meets on this day and one that meets on this day so that everybody's getting um, that intention that they need. Yeah. One, like, and, and to give you an idea of the actual number, once we start to have about 10 or 12 people on the live calls, then we will probably split the group up. Tell people like, well, which day works best for you and try to, you know, cut it back down to like six and six or, you know, five and seven or something like that. So that the groups are small enough to be pretty intimate and you're you're not getting, your needs are not getting lost or ignored in, in the group coaching. Yeah. And there's always that opportunity as well because not everybody can make it live every time. We kind of alternate. Um, so like it's every two weeks. And on the first uh, meeting of the month, it's going to be in the morning. And then on the second, you know, two weeks later, it's going to be on the same day of the week, but in the evening. So it alternates morning, evening, morning, evening, because not everybody has the same schedule and not everybody can show up live at the same time. And that kind of gives people that opportunity depending on their schedule. But anytime you're always going to get the replays and you're always going to get all the replays from before. And you also always have the opportunity to send in your questions um, through email to Stephen. If you're not going to be there live, you can still email and say, hey, I've got this issue I'm dealing with. I'm not going to be able to make it, but I really need this question answered. Can you answer it on the call? And yeah. he will do that, and then you can watch the replay. Yeah. Okay. Let me see where else. Um. I have inventory. This, we're back to a selling question now. Okay. I have inventory in an FBA warehouse that's just not selling. Should I cut my losses? Should I lower my prices? How do I handle this situation? Yeah, that's basically on a case by case, you know, item by item. Um, first, we figure out why why it's not selling. Is the competition just priced too low? Is the sales rank too high? And there's not really. Um, much sales going on at all, and so you you kind of look at that all that all that information the 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 price 
uh, the sales velocity, which you know you can look at Keepa again, like we talked about um, yesterday, understanding Keepa graphs and being like, okay, this item sells five times a month. Um, so what can you do to be one of those five sales uh, every month? You know, or if you're like, oh, this sells five times a year, that's why I'm not selling it. Uh, and so with with the situations like that where the sales are so slow and not very often, then I would cut my losses and just try to sell out, you know, by being the even though I don't like the race to the bottom, the the only way you're going to be able to get some capital back is being the, the lowest price if an item sells super slowly. Um, but if it's just because your competitors have lowered the price, look at Keepa and be like, all right, would this price recover if I wait just a little bit? Um, or do I need to act, actually join them as well? Um, but you're able to avoid those situations if you use Keepa the right way when you are sourcing and buying. But obviously, we're talking about stuff that's already purchased. Um, but so if you use Keepa to kind of figure out the best way to go from there. Yeah, and that happens to everybody. That happens yeah. to us too. Yeah, I us. mean, <laughs> you you want to use the Keepa data to make a really good decision when you're buying, but stuff happens and you just it's out of your control, and so. You know, there's any number of things that could happen that could cause it to not be selling the way you expect it to. And so you use Keepa then to try to make a decision about how am I going to, you know, recoup in this situation? Yeah. Okay. This is the last call for any questions um, about coaching or um, selling on FBA today. And yeah, we're about ready to wrap it up. There's no questions coming in. So I think everybody is busy thinking right now. Yeah. Well, tomorrow um, we are going to be talking about how to turn roadblocks, Amazon roadblocks, into just little annoying speed bumps. Uh, so come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about some of the major roadblocks that most Amazon sellers experience and how we can get past that. And yeah. in, in fact, if you have a roadblock you're experiencing, um, very quickly, put it in the chat before we go. What is yeah. a huge roadblock <laughs> that you are experiencing? And so that we can help you kind of overcome those. And so, like we said before, we want to customize this workshop to best help you. So uh, let us know what are the roadblocks that are causing you to not be able to grow your Amazon business? We want to be able to help you move things in the right direction. So that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Um, we also have a really cool announcement that we are going to let you know about tomorrow. So be sure you stick around for that. And man, I didn't even talk about this yet. We're going to give away our uh, Amazon FBA starter kit with, uh, you know, this uh, Dymo label printer and a bunch of other stuff that this barcode scanner that will help you with your, with entering in inventory. we got a bunch of labels. we got the suffocation warning labels. It's basically a really good kit to get started. Some goo gone when you're taking stickers off or you have someone else taking the stickers off of the items you're selling. Um, a roll of tape, you know, just some good stuff that will help get you started. We're going to be giving that away tomorrow night to one person who was here live Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. So if you missed one of the days, I'm sorry, you're not eligible, but it's you we still got some really great content for you so be sure to come back for sure um so we are going to um call it a night but i do want to say one thing before we go um most amazon sellers are not or, uh, let me start over most amazon sellers think they can't grow their Amazon business because they're missing out on a certain piece of information that is going to put them over the top. But when the, the truth is, most Amazon sellers are not growing beyond where they are right now because of something they actually, they don't believe about themselves or they don't believe about the process of selling on Amazon. And one of the things that we help you with the coaching program is both sides of it, giving you the information that you don't know, but then helping you believe in the process and believe in yourself. You have that accountability. We are your biggest cheerleaders. We are giving you the information that you need to know. We are helping point you in the right direction. We get to know you and your Amazon business and can start to see 
the red flags of where things could go wrong. We start to see if you need to to pivot a little bit or to refocus on something, or if you're getting just, you know, you're not growing your Amazon business by yourself anymore. I'm I'm here to help you. And if you're part of our group coaching program, there will be a group of people who will help along the way. And we want to help you make that full-time income this year, 2024, by 2024 Christmas time. We want to see you making a full-time income and we want to help you get there. So fulltimefba.com slash coaching. Don't forget the coupon codes. It will help you save $300, save $25 for the coupon code for the payment plan, save $300 for the coupon code of the painful option. And that is what I want to leave you with. We're here to help and we're excited about helping you. So, so join us. My last thing that I'm going to say is I'm saving the chat so that I can get all of the roadblocks ready for awesome. tomorrow. I love them. There's a lot of really good ones. Cool. Well, we are going to help you all and uh, and hang out tomorrow night. So we'll see you. I'll get the replay. One minute, Stephen. Don't don't sign off yet. I'm somebody's asking for the link, so don't. Okay. Kind of talk for a second. <laughs> okay. What me asking me to like talk? Uh, that's that's kind of being kind of difficult. Um, I you know I again, we love this uh, workshop. We love putting this workshop on for you guys. Y'all have been amazing. The chat's been awesome. There's been really good energy in the chat. Thank you for what you bring. Thank you again to Christy who hung, hung out with us for a while. I mean, like buying a farm, getting into cows, you know, and and that's just, I love that. And all because of the income that she was able to get started with her Amazon business. And I, what the cool thing is I can't wait to think about, and I can't wait to hear from some of you watching this video, watching this live stream what your story is going to be in three or four years, where you're going to be in three or four years because of your Amazon business. You know, maybe you got your kids involved with the Amazon business and that you got your own little entrepreneurs growing up that are going to, you know, start their own businesses, whether it's Amazon or something else. You know, I love make, make like teaching that entrepreneurship drive and dedication and, and, and spirits. And so it's, it's just, it's pretty cool to think about where you are going to be in a few years because you're watching this tonight and you decided, you know what, I'm I'm ready to make a commitment to myself and to my future and get some coaching and get some help. I've tried it on my own. Or if you haven't started selling on Amazon, I'm too scared to start trying this on my own. You're not going to be alone. We're going to be with you all the way. And we look forward to getting to know you and hearing your story. So all right. That's it for today. Again, I'll get the replay out as soon as I can. Usually it takes me a couple hours to crunch it and upload it and all that fun stuff, but I'll send an email out when the replay is ready. And then again tomorrow, I'll send you an email for uh, tomorrow night's session. Don't forget those coupon codes that I shared with you. Midnight tonight Pacific, they will disappear. So make a choice. And I hope you chose, you decide to join our coaching program. Hi, That's everyone. it for today. Thank you so much. We love See you tomorrow. Now.